So, um, part two, oh. my list this yeah. time. Um, let's go for it. Cool. I'm interested to see what you selected. How's it going? So, yeah, man. This Good. is a part two. Um, we'll do that in the description. Um, but I wanted to get into mm. some of the, the 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 lists I've read some long ago. Um, if my memory might be a bit rusty, but definitely still to pick up. I'm going to start with an absolute classic. And actually, um, borrowing on part one where you talked about um Alan Moore and Grant Morrison's, you know, like writing this almost elseworld sort of story on such an iconic character and kind of doing this like self-contained story. Um, hmm. I got to go with Batman. What happened uh -huh. to the Cape Crusader? Um, by Neil Gaiman, um, Andy Bless. Kubert on art. Um, yo, dude, I don't know where to start with the story, but like, I mean, anyone who knows Gaiman a bit is like, I mean, he's a he's a novelist by hmm. like you know. Um, so there's this this certain poeticness to his writing that you know, love or hate it, it's just um, he thinks through a lot of things that um. Yeah, I just and and the Morrison's also one of them that that um I mean, but um yeah, the story is just so twisted, man. Like even I mean, just off the top of my head, the one part where you you almost suspect that Alfred is the Joker. Um, yeah, he he gives you hints or, or yeah, plant seeds and lets your imagination run with that. Yeah, and then I mean, I don't want to give too much away. I mean, there's a scene when I mean Batman is at his own well, we're seeing him at his own funeral and he has no loved ones at his only enemies his entire rogues right. gallery it, it is, it, and it's this whole and what i love about that dude is it's almost like they're there to genuinely almost like pay their respects to this guy who was their arch nemesis for all that time there's, in that there's something poetic yeah so um yeah so i'm not going to too much on about that um this... just, uh, before you move off it, yeah uh, Talk to some of the art because I mentioned early oh, on yeah. um, about the Cubit brothers, and I, I just love Adam or Andy Cubit's art. I, I just think in in versatility how they can pretty much nail yeah. any character that they're given. Um, it's just something about their yeah, art that and appeals like, to me. Anyway. I know it sounds so cliche, but it's so Batman world, man. Like, um, yeah, you know, um, yeah, like it's the right amount of darkness. It's all the colors aren't too bright, like bright and vibey. It's it's their their physiques, the way yeah. they draw. I love I love the cubits. Yeah. So there's some more. Um, I might not have nailed the, the greatest pages and stuff, but yeah. Um, yeah as a Batman <laughs> fan, definitely. Um, but yeah, just as a cool story. Um, I, I just love those those few like weird twists that you like. What? I mean, just even yeah. pondering on some of that stuff, like. That, that he kind of dived into you like yeah it's 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 a it's a sort of brain i don't even know what the saying is sorry um but yeah it, yeah it broke my mind a bit which is cool and for people that are familiar with alan moore story i briefly touched on in the other clip is moore was challenged to write his ultimate superman story and he did it in two issues Apparently, DC laid the same kind of gauntlet or challenge to Neil Gaiman, yeah. and and they wanted to give Batman that same sort of treatment, saying, "Give us this ultimate send off, whatever story, and let's marry a great writer like Gaiman with a great artist like Kubert, and let's see what you guys can do in two issues, just like Moore did for the Superman in two issues." Yeah, and but, well, spoiler, they both nailed it. So. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so, and the that's, next... Again, sorry, I just wanted to say that's another thing that, for me, is the beauty of comic books. If you marry the right artist with the right writer, they will give you something that, that is completely unique, something that's better than a series, better than a movie, better than a normal book. And the only way to just... I think Neil Adams said the best way that you can sum that up, comic book. Yeah, that, that is what it is. No, definitely. My next pick is it's a it's a newish title. I try to have some diversity here, but it is Metal Dark Knight's Metal, um, and that's a, a I mean another combination that you just talked about. I mean Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo have just sure. done such crazy stuff together. It's insane. Um, I mean Agreed. another one that we 
I'm touching on it really briefly now, but uh, last night on Earth, um, the first issue, at least, um, for me, was just like, oh. but um, maybe I'll grab that for some other time. But, yeah, dude, I don't even know where to start with Mel. Mel is just such a spectacularly massive story. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, you know, it's this dark multiverse where different versions, iterations of Batman come. Um, and they... yeah, think, let's just expand on that first. For those of you that don't know comics, uh, Marvel or DC or whatever, um, we've spoken about, or I spoke about some of these Elseworlds kind of titles. Both publishers have that going where it's what if this happened to the X-Men or what if Spider-Man got his powers in this way? What if Spider-Man was evil? On the other side, what if you know Lex Luthor was the hero and Superman was evil, etc., etc., etc. And what they've both said is we'll create a multiverse where there's more than one Earth in different dimensions. Some characters have the ability to cross over to these various dimensions. And once upon a time, Grant Morrison actually tried to lay the whole DC multiverse out on a map and say to everyone, this is how it all fits together, where everything has its place. And like what Mark was saying, Scott Snyder took it one step further and said, okay, what if there's the flip side or the opposite of the multiverse? Let's do a dark multiverse where, again, multiple Earths in a dark realm where things are twisted and, and <laughs> not as they seem, so to speak. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in, in a, again, I don't want to really spoil for anyone reading it, but what, what you see is... Um, and I don't have those issues. I know you have them, but there's these reiterations of Batman, but each one of them has a, you know, a power from the member of the Justice League. Um, and what quickly became a really popular char is the, uh, character, sorry, um, is the Batman who lost, which is essentially Batman and Joker combined. Um, right. And, and he is cool, also one of my favorites. But, and each of them have this different origin story, how they came about. And one of my favorites is the, is the Lantern version, where, you know, um, little Bruce it Wayne... Is grabs the, you know, the, the lantern ring and with his, you know, his hope, he overpowers everything. I mean, what, sorry, his will, he overpowers everything. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, that's just like really well thought out, um, you know, by, by Scott, Snyder. Um, yeah, Scott Snyder. Sorry, man. Um, I lost my and mind. I was going to say on that, for, for those folks that are interested in the story, I think it comes in three parts if you're getting the collected TPs. And one of those is just dedicated uh, to each of those dark multiverse versions of Batman, um, giving you their origin story um, in there. And that, that in, in and of itself, is a great book to pick up and just read for, if you like, or want to see what happens if Batman got a Green Lantern ring, what happens if Batman got the powers of Ares, uh, Wonder Woman's world, what happens if Batman got powers of flash is one of them red death yeah correct of the flash etc so that in and of itself is a great book to read and, and see all these dark twisted origins for batman very very cool um and it does complement the metal story because those characters are quite integral in yeah. the metal storyline yeah and one of the other side reasons i brought this the this book today um that i sh i did show it right um already forgetting um, I'm going to hold it up I anyway just yeah. show people again, just in case. Um, I think I did, <laughs> but uh, um, and let's just show you some art. But one of the main reasons I did this, um, really cool stuff, as usual, Greg Capullo, mm. can't go wrong, um, is that you know, they've like sort of pre-announced that there's a new kind of story of metal coming out, and it's very centered on Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, and, and that ties into actually... Well, yeah, so that's coming. So I definitely think we'll get hold of that as soon as we can. But it ties into my next, sorry, knocking the mic here. Um, in my last title, um, I haven't read everything because it's still coming out, but it is the new Justice League Dark, surprise, surprise for Mark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, the, I won't go too much in the story. And there's little, any teeny little bits of like crossover from in within metal. Um, but what put a lot of people off is on the cover, you'll see it's a, it's a new team. It's, it's man, bad. It's, um, detective chimp. Um, chimp, always, yeah. yeah always and, and swamp things, Zatanna, um, and then wonder Woman. Um, and at first when you look at it, it does seem like an obvious draw card for justice league people to cross over and stuff. And you don't see Constantine on the cover. And a lot of people naively were like, we're not going to buy this because Constantine's on it. And he is, he's literally on the second page 
of the of the first <laughs> issue, you know, like, um, and he's still very, very much part of it, him and Swamp Thing. And, and Wonder Woman is a logical progression because she's such a magic-based power. And essentially, yeah. um, the crux of the story is that there's, because of this multiverse and this dark multiverse, there's um, these monsters called the other kind, um, if I'm not okay. mistaken. And, and they're coming to basically, the premise of the story is that magic was loaned to Earth and abused. Um, and they're coming oh. to take it back. Um, well, when you talk about abusing magic, Constantine is <laughs> up there. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's, it's quite, and I like how it tied into Zatanna. It, it is because she has to, you know, find a way to speak to her father, Zatara, which knows so much about it. And it's, it's you know, um, and yeah, and there's a lot of a lot that's happening. And again, I haven't finished it because it is ongoing and I kind of lost um, track Um but what I've read so far, it just it's so exciting, man. It makes me really excited. And then, and it dives into characters that I either didn't even know about, like these small magic characters and you know, um and, and some cool. mythological stuff like um I'll try to find it now quickly, but man, I, I always mispronounce it, but there's those famous three witches um in all uh, like yeah. mythology. And they, they tie them in and how they actually marked Wonder Woman, which is how the witching hour comes about, um, which is you know, um, yeah, I don't want to grab that now, but you know, Wonder Woman eventually actually gets infected and like, yeah, like, and th that was a whole side story that they eventually do. Um, but yeah, man, no, no, the art, the art's rad. The art's super cool. Uh, I dig the way it flows and, um, yeah. And there, there has been a, a few artists that have come and gone on it. Um, one yeah. of them that I really dig is, um, Jesus Marinu. Um, I mean, oh, he was yeah, at Comic-Con Africa weird. Yeah, he did a lot. I think some of the cover stuff. And I mean, here is some Constantine, some goodness. Him, I don't know if you can see that dude. Um, oh, that's awesome. Getting all badass and stuff. So yeah, dude. And it's, I mean, it goes all the way. It's got Nabu in because it goes around, you know, the, 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 the you know, like the, the fate of, hey. you know, um, yeah, of, of the realm and all that. So, I mean, he's heavily tied into it. Um, and I didn't know much about him too. So it was cool to like read and just like sort of gain little, Easter eggs of knowledge here and there. So, yeah, dude, that was that awesome. Yeah, my three main ones. Um, Sorry, dude, who wrote that uh, Justice League Dark that, that you're holding up there? Um, it's I don't know him. I don't know if you do, but as far as I know, it's a, a dude called James Tinian or Tinian. Yeah, James Tinian the Fourth. I think I'm, I'm not that familiar with him, but uh, I've got to got to give him some props then for. Yeah, Not sorry, it's backwards the, for you, the, but the mythos is, but also bringing in all these other magical characters, like you say. Yeah, so um, yeah, and I'm, I dig this man, and like in the first first time in a while, where I was like just like just flat out enjoying it. It like isn't too dark, but it is dark. It's Justice League dark, but I mean the art isn't like gritty and stuff. It's very like punchy and um, yeah, man. Um, so I was just having fun with it, and and and. You know, just in case uh, I w might just be self deluded, I did like check out a few other reviews, and most guys really digged it because, unfortunately, because I hate to say this, but almost if you look in the past, like they are kind of B list characters, so it felt like DC weren't giving them, you know, if you look at like old Constantine and the newer storylines, you know, they're always like shorter, they always get cut off way quicker, and there, there almost yeah. isn't as much attention paid, paid to them. So it feels like they're really identifying, seeing that they're. I mean, there's a massive following on just Swamp Thing alone. Um, and and yeah. I know maybe bringing Wonder Woman in might be a cheap shot, but it works, dude. Um, you even see she's even an outsider within the clan, and eventually they get forced to, like, they don't want to work with her because she is Miss Goody Two Shoes in the Justice League. They they play on that, you know, like um, so that is cool. yeah. Um, and her and Zatanna also have a bit of like a who's the biggest female in the room, kind of like bashing heads. And then they, you know, they, they, they figure it out eventually. They realize that they want the same thing. So there's a lot of cool yeah, dynamics in there that I really dig. And, and constantly is in and out. He's not like team member the whole time. He's like there when he needs to be at the, the least convenient time. But that is, it's just so him, you know? So, so yeah, I really dig that. Um, and I, I want to continue reading and maybe I'll jump back into it um, at a later stage. Um, and give more but yeah um if you're into those dark characters i think it's a no-brainer man I, I really like that they've at least they, it seems that they're giving them like a bit of attention again because they see that there is a you know um it's warranted as the you know because there's a following um yeah so yeah well dude i mean i've got to say uh when 
DC first started with this Justice League Dark. Um, I think it was back in the New 52 stuff. Um, I initially was a bit skeptical. Then I took the plunge, got one or two TPs, and it was an undiscovered sort of like gem for me. Um, all of those Justice League Dark uh, stories, TPs, are... I would recommend it to most people that that's a, their kind of thing. If if it's not for the characters that are represented mm. in the team, it's just good. If you like magic type stories, etc., those were all really cool and very, very, very a good read. And I've, I've heard this from a lot of other guys that have their own sort of YouTube channels, readers, etc., and, and recommended reads. A lot of the guys, in some way, shape, or form, will touch on the Justice League dark stuff and and say that it's it's not the mainstream, it's not what you're used to, but it's extremely gripping, thrilling, great, great stories. They're different stories to what you're probably used to. And like you say, these characters that were originally perceived to be B-grade, not A-listers, yeah. and they hold their own and more so. Uh, yeah, very, very cool stuff. Yeah, Love definitely. That. Um, yeah, I see, it. And on a side note, I'm like very DC heavy here, like, so surprise, surprise. Um, so I'll try, I'll try <laughs> making maybe some Marvel or something next time. Um, Cause I mean, there's a few things you've told me about that I wanna, hopefully I can grab somehow. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it before lockdown, but that new Nightcrawler, I'm yeah. really keen to to grab my hands on that. So um, that that's maybe... gonna be a good thing, I think. Jonathan Hickman doing Nightcrawler. Can't yeah. go wrong. No, for sure. 